How's it going everybody? My name is Josh and I want to welcome you to The Creative Goose and today I want to talk to you about two lenses that are not new by any stretch of the imagination. The Sigma 30mm come out around 2016 and Sony's 1650 kit lens actually come out around 2013 I think. Now having said that Sigma and Sony still sell these lenses to this day and the 1650 is actually a viable kit option for any of uh, Sony's current APS-C lineup. So the new ZV-E10 or like an A6100 or an A6400, you can still get the 16 to 50 lens for those camera bodies. So without rambling on too much longer, let's go ahead and hop over to my computer and I'll show you guys some pictures that I have taken with both lenses. Okay guys, so here is the first picture for the AB comparison. And before we get into the comparison, I just wanted to go over some settings uh, for you guys. I am shooting all of these through the Sony a6400 with no picture profile and the creative style is set to standard and they're set to zero for all three settings. Uh, the only thing you're going to see change is the shutter speed. I kept everything at f5 for both the Sigma and the kit lens because that made it fair because the kit lens at 30 mil can only go to f5. So really the only thing you're gonna see is the shutter speed might change a little bit, but that was just to compensate for the exposure to make sure the exposure was correct. The white balance is set to 5,000 for all of these photos. And I took these locked off on a tripod and I even used the shutter timer so I wouldn't introduce any unwanted shaking. So with all that out of the way, here is the first image. And as far as focusing goes, I set it to autofocus and I set it to center focus. So whatever the lens decide to focus on, that's kind of what it went with. And that's how I decided, you know, again, a fair shot for both of them. So on this one, this is the kit lens. Let's zoom in on these little water stains. And they're pretty clear and we're zoomed in at 122%. So out of the gate, the first thing that I noticed with this photo is a little bit of vignetting. Um, again, not a bad thing. It just kind of goes with, you know, personal taste and your preference. So this fence right here is about 25, 30 feet back to give you a reference. Okay, so let's switch over. This is a kit lens. Let's switch over to the Sigma. Okay, so the colors definitely changed quite a bit. Which again is not a big deal. You can, you know, change all that stuff in post. I took these on a standard JPEG, okay? I usually do everything in RAW and I advise you do the same. Um, but again, I wanted to give these lenses the best possible chance to compete fairly. So I didn't want to uh, shoot in RAW and then color grade stuff. So this is straight out of camera, as little you know, messing with them as I could do. Finagling, I guess, is the word that I could possibly do. So there's less vignetting here. See, there's the kit lens. And if we zoom in, here's the Sigma. If we zoom in on the water spots, it looks like it picked up focus up here instead of on this leaf, like on the kit lens. Let's zoom back and, and scroll over. Okay, which is, is not a big deal. I mean, it's just where it decided to focus and they're still, where they decided to focus, they're still tack sharp. And, you know, with these two photos, I couldn't tell you the difference, to be honest with you. Even looking at them side by side, I can't say one is worse or better than the other. So let's go to the next photo. Okay, and this is the Sigma. So the shutter speed went to 320 on this one. And I was focusing right here on this texture. Well, the, the lens rather was deciding to focus in this area. That's really good. And you can see this vignetting on the grass is still really good even at F5. So this is the Sigma. Let's switch over to the kit lens. So the color is different, but again, I checked the exposure and everything was set properly. So we had 0, 0.0 on the exposure. So just the, the color difference is the big thing. I noticed the greens are quite a bit different on each lens. And again, not, you know, not one is better than the other, but they're just different. And if I would have shot these in raw, like this right here kind of looks underexposed, it wouldn't have, ma have mattered with raw. Let me see here. And that's the Sigma lens. Okay, so up till now, I'm not really, if you were to show me these pictures and say, hey, this one's, you know, 
$300 or so, or $280 and some change, I probably wouldn't buy it up until this point. Okay, so this first one is the kit lens, and there's nothing exciting about a fence, but I wanted to take this picture because of the straight lines, so that way you guys can kind of see how much of a barrel distortion or lens distortion that you're going to get. This is the kit lens. So let's see here. I mean, let's zoom in. I mean, looks pretty good. Let's look at the Sigma lens to get a comparison. Okay, so you can see the lens distortion quite a bit. But again, any basic software is going to have lens correction in it. So that's not, you know, a big thing in post. Oh, look, little lizard. Huh. I wonder if he stayed the whole time. No, he did not. So, <laughs> so let's zoom in. One thing I noticed is this wood texture right here looks a little bit sharper on the Sigma. So let's zoom out and switch over. I think it is on this one. I don't know if that was just it deciding to focus a little better. But if you look at that texture, you can kind of see. Let me go back to the kit lens. Yeah, the Sigma is definitely sharper on this. And again, you know, with, with the lens distortion, you can, that's corrected easily in post. And, you know, 99% of the time, you're going to want to correct it anyway in post on every lens. So let's skip to the last three photos. And the reason that I decided to take three more photos, this is where the Sigma shines. This is no longer an AB comparison, folks. Look at that picture, that beautiful bokeh. You can see the settings. This is stopped all the way down to 1.4 and 3200 on the shutter so the reason it's cranked up to 3200 is because i set this to aperture priority so auto white balance aperture priority and just look at that shot that is beautiful to me i'm not sure it looked like it tried to focus right here and you have to remember you know with 1.4 set as your aperture your depth of field is very shallow so you know, this is in focus and then, you know, two centimeters back is not in focus. So let's switch to another one. This was the Sigma you can see right here. Also still stop down or I'm open wide up rather to 1.4. And even when I zoom in, the wind was actually blowing this a little bit. So, you know, with a faster shutter speed, it's not going to matter so much, but I am, you know, 1.4 on the aperture and it still come out really nice. Let's look at the last one. And this is the one that we were A-B comparison. And look at that bokeh in the background. That is absolutely beautiful. If I zoom in, looks like it focused on this section right here. And again, even with that, that beautiful bokeh, it's still really sharp where it focused. All right, guys, again, so I hope this helped you out. And if you got anything out of this video, continued support is greatly appreciated. I don't know if you noticed or not, but this is my first video on this channel. And uh, yeah, if you could hit that subscribe button, give her a thumbs up, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Have a good one.